Rock, you are my hero. <laughs> you are my hero. They're not just one. They are thousands upon thousands. My name is Dale Rogers. I used to be executive director of Compassion and Action, uh, the second medical of marijuana planting <coughs> and in Seattle. I got my start at the University of California at San Francisco, where I was uh, second in charge of the laboratory there, and I met this cute little old lady that came in on, on Thursdays. Her name was Brownie Mary. And she had gotten caught giving AIDS patients brownies. Oh my word, I fell in love with her. Got, and I was introduced to Dennis Perron. I took a lot of AIDS patients to his club, and that's where I got my start. I came back home to Seattle, and I went, well, am I going to continue on to medical school, or am I going to go into activism? And I met um, a wonderful woman, Joanna McKee from Green Cross Patient Co-op. She laid the tracks in Washington State with medical marijuana, and I was lucky enough to become her patient, uh, her very first patient coordinator in 1996. Even though she is not here today, and it really uh, pains her to do uh, travel, even though she's right over the water, um, she's still much very, very, very active. Just lately, well, I'm gonna hold back because this story is gonna tie in together. But anyway. So over the years, we, uh, we got, in 1999, we're celebrating our 10 years of having legal medical marijuana in Washington State. When we got that passed, I went on to open up Compassion in Action. It was a delivery service. She was excited. She continued on with Green Cross. I continued on with Compassion in Action. And um, a friend came up from California that was a long time after this there, too. We started Life Find Clinical Resources. So I've had my hand in opening up a lot of places. Um, one of the greatest things about doing this and about having the longevity in Seattle is working with the local law enforcement there. The cops, everybody's like, oh man, it's the cops, it's the police, they're bad. No, they're not. Actually, that's where we found a lot of great support was with the sheriff and also the Seattle Police Department. We've had an excellent working relationship for over 13 years. We've seen three police chiefs transfer through. Um, the one before the this one here, North Stafford, is a member of the law enforcement. You love that question. Absolutely. North Stafford was even a better police chief. So and I'm really excited that he's a member of LEAP and he goes around the country and talks a lot about that. <clears throat> now our next guy, uh, Gil Kurlowski, he uh, just took over as chief of police eight years ago. He came from the federal community um, to take the job as chief of police, of police in Seattle. Before that, he was chief of police of Buffalo, where he was known for community relations. Well, just recently, I was uh, watching the internet, and news came up about a new drug star. Mm -hmm. I called Joanna, because I was busy working with my new nonprofit. I called Joanna and said, what is this about Gil being the new drug star? And she goes, excuse me? So the next thing I know, I'm taking the Seattle Times, where it's where she had already called him. So Joanna McKee, the medical marijuana advocate for Washington State, and Douglas Hyatt, our lawyer extraordinaire, were the first two people to endorse the new drug czar for the United States of America, which is going to be our own police chief where we have a working relationship with. which is the lowest priority uh, for uh, marijuana set in, uh, in Seattle. So he's worked on a lot of drug policy stuff. We've done a lot of drug policy there, including medical marijuana. So it's nice. He hasn't been confirmed for this position yet, but it looks like he's going to get it. And it's going to be great to have someone on a national level. So maybe there's hope out there for Michelle, for Mark, and maybe we can end this foolishness. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have, we do. It is time for a change. We do have a new President Obama, and the choices he's made has been pretty good so far. Um, at first, yes, right after he got elected, there were raids in California. And actually, I called up at the first one, Lake Tahoe. I called up the White House. And the young gal was sitting there, she says, our computers aren't up, I have to hand write this out. And as I'm telling her, you know, please, this is insane. Obama said he stopped the raids. 
She, she told me, she goes, would you please call everybody you know and have them call us? She goes, we're taking these messages, and the way this is going to be heard is this is going to be put on the president's desk. And if we can get everybody calling in, this will make the issue number one. Not only getting that positive reinforcement from inside the White House, right after Obama was elected, we had change.gov. And they, they were asking the United States city, citizens, what is it that you're concerned about? Marijuana made the list, number one. On the first time they had it up, and the second time they had it up, that was the number one question, was marijuana and legalization. So we need to take a look at that. But moreover, we need to take a look at the medical side. I agree, we're not all going to be free until the plant is free, until the end of probation. But in the meantime, we cannot screw the patients as we go along. I heard Michelle sitting here talk about the healthcare of Canada and signing up and you know all these promises made in gold and you know medicine being given to you. I've watched in California where patients have to pay out a couple hundred dollars just for an ID card that gets them nothing. But along comes with that is your care driver cannot ha have a felony and be able to grow for you. Well, I'm sorry, all the, everybody that I know that are growers and who have felonies are damn good at growers. They grow the best medical marijuana. So it's like taking our top research scientists and saying, you can no longer do any research. We have come a long way in Washington State. Uh, our guidelines there and what we can do and accept for patients are a lot stricter than California's. And that's one of the reasons we're not having problems as California is with all the federal things and all the federal situation down there. And one of the other things, too, is the pricing. We've had a good group of folks up there saying, you know, what is a reasonable price for medicine? Obviously, 120 bucks for an eighth of medical marijuana, that's no longer medicine. That's just robbery. Because a lot of people I know, they're sick and they're on disabilities and they make $680 a month. That's nothing. So to be charging $125 for an eighth of the pot, that's just, it's rude. It's just rude. So one of the good things is we do have a good group of people up in Washington State and who have committed to patient services and bringing good quality medicine for a good quality price and being fair about that. So we don't have anything to offer the feds. We don't have big giant houses. We don't have you know, the Mercedes Benz. We don't have all the profits. We don't have the bank accounts. We have nothing. And in the end, they know they're going to walk in and they're going to have to take care of us and provide us our medications and our doctors and our nurses and our lab tests. So actually, we're a liability and it costs them a lot more for them to take us in. But with all that being said, I think there is a better cha a change coming. And um, I'm just really happy to be here. And I am actually going to be wrapping up. So are there any questions? Yes? Tell us more about the uh, Gil, the new drug show. That's pretty exciting because I've read Joanna McKee's comments in the newspapers <coughs> and the wire services and all we've done before anybody else. And her exact term was God bless us all. It, absolutely, God bless us all. You know, it's, it, it, actually the better pick for a drug czar would be a doctor over that position. And <laughs> now just because I come from the med medical side. But you know what, if it's gonna be our chief of police, then so be it. Because one thing is, like I said, we've done a lot of uh, drug policy reform in Seattle, and we've done it with no big deal. We've done this, we've done what we've been able to do by having calm, collective communications with our public officials, officials with our governors, with our senators, and also, um, which has led in, which led eight years, Gil, to walk into a process that has already begun. Gil has been known for building uh, bridges He's in communities. This is what he did in Buffalo. This is what the feds asked him to leave his job and said, would you come and work for federal law enforcement on building communities and skill buildings? And he always wanted to live in Seattle. So when the, uh, when the position for chief of police came available, he took it. He's had his ups and his downs like anybody has. But throughout it, he has been very truthful and honest to us medical marijuana patients and also the drug reformers. He understands the importance of needle exchange. He, so he's got to see a lot of these actions put into, uh, a lot of these uh, words put in actions, yes? 
sounds awesome. Tell us how Roger Goodman is doing. He used to come here for our conventions, like Beyond Prohibition. Now he's a state senator. You know, uh, Roger's been there. Um, it, Rod, yes, absolutely. Roger Goodman was a lawyer and also did uh, King County Bar Association. Got them involved in a whole